Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one ritz at a time. It is Monday. It is our first Monday of, no, second Monday of 2022. And I have Rylas Dana with us. How are you doing, sir? Hi, doing great. It's our first Monday. That's of the true. Year. Yes. Uh, and that's what you're thinking. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, wait, how could it be the first Monday? It's the 10th. That doesn't make mathematical sense, but it is our first Monday. That is right. So, hey, what I wanted to talk about here, Rylas, is obviously in my expert series, which I'm lucky enough to have eight people a part of every week. You are my attorney. More specifically, you are my probate estate LLC attorney. So it is the beginning of 2022. So why don't we get kind of brass tacks or intro and talk about what is probate and then how it might benefit or be helpful for real estate investors. What do you think? Yeah, love it. Love that topic. So my day job is, is a probate and estate planning attorney. Right. So, so that's what I do every day. Another kind of like a segue into this i as i was coming in and setting up my computer i asked my team my my probate paralegal i was, I was like what what should we talk about today you got any topics she said fighting siblings <laughs> yeah so you got, and you got a phone call scheduled later this afternoon <laughs> <laughs> have fun with that <laughs> yeah so um yeah let, let's talk about probate because probate people i think it's one of those things that a lot of people they just know it as something bad, but they don't understand exactly what it is. Yeah. You know, as an average person, right, before I had any assets, right, what I would have said probate was, and again, probably really wrong, was that's what the rich people go through because they got money. And that was kind of my extent. Yeah, there's a lot of misconceptions. Right. So I, I always assume, you know, whenever I'm meeting, meeting someone new, I assume that they have no clue what probate is. So I... You know, I, I ask, you know, if they've heard of it. And a lot of times I, the people that know what it is, is because they went through it with a family mm -hmm. member right. is usually, usually in my experience, or maybe they're in, in the real estate uh, world. And then, uh, yeah, I ask people if they know what it is. And they say, um, I don't know, it's something bad. And um, a lot of times it's, it's, they say, oh, it's where the government takes all your money. <laughs> so that's, that's not exactly true. Yeah, yeah. It's more so the lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> it's more the attorneys. Yeah. So let, let's talk about what probate is. So a okay. simple definition, I would say, is it's the legal process mm -hmm. to change title of an asset mm -hmm. out of the name of the deceased. Okay, that makes sense. That's So again, let me repeat it back as a non-attorney. It's basically, um, hey, my mom, again, I'll, my, I'll say my dad. My dad owned it. My dad died you know, at the court or whatever, the title, whoever has these things, it's still in their name. It can't be in their name because they are now deceased. So we have to legally move it and we have to do it uh, how they, meaning in this case, my dad wanted it to be done. Is that kind of fair? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, um, I'll, I'll make one correction. So okay. probably it, it comes from a Latin word meaning to prove. Mm -hmm. So I'll, the, the correction though, or the challenge, sometimes dad says one thing, uh -huh. But we have to do what's legally controlling. Yeah, that's you what know, I meant. Yes. A valid will. Mm -hmm. Or if there's not a valid will, then we go according to the laws of intestacy. There you go. So yeah, so court, so probate is the legal process to do that. Now, a lot of misconceptions. So if there's a way to transfer assets, you don't need to go through probate. Hmm. So for the bank account, if there is another member of the bank account or if there's a beneficiary of the bank account after mm -hmm. someone passes away, the beneficiary is a legal contract paid to this person upon my death, uh, no issue with probate. Okay. So where you might have an issue is if there is no beneficiary named. Got it. And then same thing for, for real estate. Mm. So if there's not another owner on the title or not, not a way to transfer the title, then we'll have to go through the probate court. Well, let's talk about that just as a, a real life example, right? I, again, having been someone who's opened up a couple of bank accounts in his time, it is it is right there on the form, right? They kind of put it, they like, I don't, not force, force, but they strongly suggest, hey, put someone here, right? I bought a lot of property. That is nowhere on the, it's nowhere on there, right? Uh, I'm just wondering if that should be on there. I mean, that's a crazy left turn, I know, but. It's very, definitely very different between a bank account, which is like, hey, who's the beneficiary just in case first? Hey, you're buying a house. Who's the, It's not on any of the forms that I've seen. Yeah, great point. That's an often overlooked, uh, overlooked process. Hmm. So I, I would say um, 
good realtors are bringing this up to their clients. Oh, okay. Is one opportunity. You know, I, I try to preach preach this. You know, I I tell clients when I help them set up a an estate plan. Right. And a lot of times that involves a trust. We won't get into that uh, particularly, but it's it, it's a way to avoid probate. Mm -hmm. But you have to make sure that it your trust is the owner of your real estate. Right. So anytime you refinance or if you acquire something new, that, that's a good question that you should be asking. Mm -hmm. You know, it, like, do I have a way, you know, does my plan provide a way to transfer this new asset I'm yeah. acquiring? This is very, this new one, the one that closed on Friday. What, what happens if? I, I think that's very wise advice. And again, if you're a real estate agent out there, it might be worth just showing that you care and you're thinking about, it, especially investment properties and the like. So I, I, I like that. Okay. Yeah, that, that is going to set you apart mm -hmm. from your competition as an agent if you're asking those questions. So, so every property purchased, I, I, I believe, maybe we can debate uh, Dion sure. later, but it should be either be in a trust mm -hmm. or another business entity, like an LLC. Yep. yep. So the, the, the trust, so we have a way to avoid probate. Mm-hmm. And why is avoiding probate a good idea? Let's we 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 said it, but let's talk about yeah. why. Yeah. So we said what it is. It's got to go through the court. I guess is always said at this part. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we want to avoid that is it's a lot of steps. It's very time consuming. Yeah. So especially California. I think California is the undisputed hardest probate in the state. <laughs> or in, Yay, in California. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> we win again. <laughs> uh, so a lot of people in California are actually wise to this. Okay. So I've been watching some other um, probate real estate channels where it's you know, probate real estate investors. And um, there's actually less probates in California compared to other counties hmm. because the property values are so high in California oh, and yeah. probate is so terrible that the, the word's kind of gotten out. Like, <laughs> hey, this is, this is something you need to do. Yeah. Okay. So probate, again, is a long process. Also, it's not free. Correct. It, it's not free. So starting just with the, the court filing fees and, and the cost in Arizona, uh, it's about a thousand bucks, just the cost to do a probate. Okay. Uh, maybe a little less, depending on the county, maybe probably between six to 800. Mm -hmm. That's just raw cost. That's, okay. that's not including having someone help you do it. Right. Um, California, probably double that at least, you know, minimum mm -hmm. cost. Uh, part of the reason it's so hard in California is, is you have to get what's called a probate referee. It's an appraiser mm. that values the process and you got to pay them a percentage based on the asset. Okay. Wow. So yeah. that sounds expensive. Yeah. Yeah. It can be. So, so yeah, you generally want to avoid probate because you don't want that extra time involved, that, that process of having to get someone uh, the authority to act for the estate. Yeah. And then you have to get. So we talked about the cost. So we also said time, but let's put time around that, right? So somebody passes away January 1st, you know, you're thinking that you're going to get oodles of cash. In reality, you might not see a completed probate, what, for six months in California? Oh, no. California, I'd say 18 months. I'd, I'd, just, say, I'd yeah. say 12 to 18. So that's a long time for that asset to be not, you know, not disposable. Right, right. And then the um, more than the money it costs the estate, right? Because mm -hmm. you're dead at this point, right? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I would say the hassle that you're leaving behind. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's one of the motivations to avoid probate is they don't want their loved ones to have to uh, spend all that time and have to wait. Mm -hmm. And then if there's if siblings or, or beneficiaries are not in agreement, that's when mm -hmm. things can get ugly real yep. easy. Well, let's talk about that. Your uh, your paralegal talked about fighting siblings. How would how would um, a trust or whatnot prevent fighting siblings? Uh, here, here's one specific issue I'm seeing mm -hmm. lately. I do not like co-trustees, two people being oh. co-trustees, where two people are in charge together. So like equal, like 50-50, so there's no tie break, if you will. Right, right. Ah. And that's something I, I see a lot of people will do. Like when, in, in two scenarios, if they have his and hers kids sometimes, right? They each ah. have kids from a different relationship. Okay. And they're like, I want, you know, they each want one of their kids. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, what happens when they can't agree? Right. 
Yeah. So, and then I'm also hearing from banks. I'm hearing banks not not accepting to serve as uh, two people as co-trustee. We have a specific hmm. circumstance. Interesting. I, I think that's kind of ridiculous. I think the bank shouldn't um, be able to prevent that. But on the same time, like I, I'm saying that I don't like it because um, yeah. you, if you have two different people, it takes both of them together to do anything. Yeah, because because a, a split vote means nothing, right? Uh, correct, correct. Because uh, yeah. So yeah. you don't have anyone to do it. So so I, I would say in designing a plan, we want something that's easy to execute. You know, make it very clear what the wishes are. Yes. And then I I prefer having a single person to execute it. Okay. And then again, let's just talk about fighting sisters or brother, sister, brothers for mom or dad's assets. If there is a correctly executed, um, you know, will, trust, all of that, they can be crabby, but the process just executes and, and you know, you're going to execute it the way it was outlined, right? It's kind of, it's the rules of the road and you, and you don't have any choices. Correct, correct. Yeah, so... If, if, if you have a good plan and uh, they're crabby, that's one thing, right? They yeah. can, um, very few people will actually uh, lawyer up and formally contest. Hmm. You've yeah, heard it, that, but it's often the eight, nine figure worthy, worth people that have kids that fight the mom or dad's plan. No, but yeah, yeah, people fight all the time. Like you don't okay. need uh, um, eight or nine figures there uh, for people to want to, to fight over it. Hmm. The, the other kind of challenge with it is just all the emotion of it, right? Yeah. You know, they just, they just lost someone and whether they had a good relationship with mom and dad or a bad relationship, sometimes it just brings out all of these yeah. Uh, yeah. issues yeah. with their siblings that they want to take out, or it's not fair that they did this for you and not me, yeah. or mom and dad said this to me 20 years ago, blah, blah, blah. And... Yeah. So that's why earlier it can be a challenge. Like, you know, they, I, I promised them on their deathbed that I would do this. Right. And I feel like, well, sorry, you're gonna have to break their yeah. promise. Yeah. Where, where is that? Yeah, exactly. Because legally, that, that's not enforceable, and if you yeah. do that, you're gonna get sued. So yeah, that's 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 a bad outcome for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. hey, do me a favor. If somebody wanted to reach out to you in California or Arizona, how would you like to, them to do that? It's the easiest way. You can go to rylessdana.com, my first and last name. I got a landing page there that links to my law firm websites and everything I'm doing, including this playlist, including our, our playlist. Yes, sir. It's there. Every again, playlist, attorney, go watch it. Lots of great material there. Thanks, Rylas. I appreciate it. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm.